Hey guys! Whoa! Life's been a bit of a juggling act lately, hasn't it? Whew! I sure have learnt some new stuff this week as well. The juggling, of course. A little bit of mathematics. One plus one plus one equals three. How easy peasy. That's wrong, Dad! Sorry? One plus one plus one equals one. Because God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Three in one. I thought I knew it all. Thank you for enlightening me, Penelope. You're welcome. Looks like I learned something new this week. Thanks for joining us with this week's episode of Salt Kids Online. It's so good to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ruth and this is... Brad. Oh, good. He knows his name. That's a really good start. <laughs> hey, so awesome that you've been tuning in, kids, to uh, learn about uh, what we've been learning about lately. The whole upside down theme and learning that God's ways are quite different, but much better than our ways. Yeah. And so good on you guys for getting involved with the competitions and the challenges that we've been setting. And the winner of last week's competition was Alyssa Smith. Well done you, Alyssa. Round of applause for you. And a clap. <laughs> nice. Well, this week we're carrying on with our theme and we're going to look at how God's plan is bigger than we can imagine and that is worth celebrating. So why don't sure you get is. up onto your feet now too. and let's worship him and thank him for his amazing love. Let's go, all in! Everything I need, you are When nobody else is listening to me, you are Before my heart took its first beat, you already loved me, Lord And in your kindness, you saved me, you're all
Think you know everything, eh? Well, wrap your head around this one. Okay, here's the riddle. What did the shoe say to the hat before setting off on a walk? I'll tell you later, alligator. Ah, easy peasy, Penelope. Oh, I know that riddle. Not going to tell you guys, though. Nah, sorry, I don't tell the truth. I do not have a clue. Hope you guys do. Do you might need to have a think, and uh, Penelope will be back soon with the answer. Mm. But before that, we've got a few other things to do. We've got a guessing game for you today. Mm. Now, I've got some items here that I've got wrapped up. I want you to have a look at them at home and see if you can figure out what is inside this. Brad's going to give you a few clues by describing them for you and see if you can get it right. So, Brad, what do you reckon this first one is? You're welcome. Ah. Round, hard, round and hard. Mm. Do you think you might know what it is at home? Well, let's get Brad to open it mm. and we'll see. It's like it's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Huh. Did you guess an orange? Or did you guess a ball? Hmm. Let's go on to the next one. Here we go. This is our next one here of something you might have in your home at the moment. Brad, can you describe it for everyone, please? Sure. Uh, kind of hard, long, with an attachment thing at the end. Mm, okay. That's have you made your guess at home? If you have, let's see if you're right. Open it up, Brad. <laughs> ah. Ah. Hmm, did you guess toothbrush at home? Or maybe you guessed correctly, it's a pencil and a sharpener. Well done if you did cor guess correctly. I hope you were sharper than me. <laughs> now, here's our last one. Brad, can you describe this for everyone at home, please? Somewhat soft, somewhat squishy, <laughs> and somewhat, how should we say, cylinder electrical. Cylindrical? Yes, that is the correct term for the shape. Uh, is there <laughs> such a thing? I'm not sure. Well, have you guessed at home? You might guess this one. What is it? Ah! ah it's a roll of toilet paper! <laughs> did you guess that? Well, if you did, well done. Booby prize. <laughs> now, some of these gifts were easy to guess, but some were surprising. You may have had a really good guess at it. And you even might have been sure that you knew exactly what was inside. But, surprise, some of them were a big discovery. Now, we're going to hear about two people who found out more to discover about Jesus than they had ever guessed before. Check it out. Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name's Jacob, but my friends call me Jake. I don't know how all these balloons got here. It must just be a, another hilarious April Fool's Month joke from my friends. <laughs> and it's a good one. But I can't find anything. I mean, it took me forever just to find this camera. Hello? Camera? Where are you? I need to talk about humility. Camera? Camera? Hello, where are you? I need to talk about humility. So, let's talk about humility. Humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. Now, what's a good way to describe humility? Okay, so let's say I was a world famous balloon maker. 
I could be all like, I make balloons better than anybody. I deserve the best seat in the house at the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the balloon convention. I deserve the best seat in the house at the balloon convention. Meh. What if I won a contest for best color box puzzle solving? I could be all like, I can cube solve faster than you. I'm smart and you're not. <laughs> or I could be like, hey, if you want to know more about cube solving, I can teach you because I'm smart and also nice. Lamps or electricity. You know everything there is to know about electricity. You're like Alfred Einstein. This lamp works because of power going through the wire into the light bulb and it makes it bright and stuff. And I can control it with a switchy poo. I know everything there is to know about electricity and light and things like that. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was really weird. I don't really know anything about electricity. Anyway, today's story is about these people who thought they knew everything about what God was up to, but they really had a lot more to discover. I've got a lot more to discover too. Like where's my bed and my TV and my floor? The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. The sun was still high in the sky as Cleopas and his friend, who we'll call Micah, started their journey to the town of Emmaus. The day was hot and their sandals kicked up dust off the hard pack road. They were exhausted by the difficult events of the past few days. Seven miles, we'll make it by dinner time. You believe it? All that stuff the women said when they came back from the garden. I don't really feel like talking. What if it's true? Have you ever seen a dead man come back to life? Lazarus? You didn't see that, you heard about well, it. Well, lots of people saw it. <sighs> Don't look, but fast walker behind us. Uh, just get over, he'll pass. He's slowing down. You know him? I'm not looking. That makes it weird. Nope. Don't know him. Great. Now he knows we're talking about him. Way to make it awkward. Hi. Hi. The man had caught up and now matched his pace to theirs. So what are you talking about as you walk along? Cleopas and Micah exchanged a surprise glance. Cleop is slow to a stop. Are you the only person visiting Jerusalem who doesn't know? Don't you know about the things that have happened there in the last few days? What things? The man began to walk again, as if he expected Cleopas and Micah to join him. What do we do? Go with it. <clears throat> the things about Jesus of Nazareth. He was a prophet. He was powerful in what he said and did. But the chief priests and our rulers handed Jesus over to be sentenced to death. And they nailed him to a cross. Yeah. We'd hoped he was the one who was going to set Israel free. This all happened three days ago. But early this morning, something crazy happened. Uh, some of the women who followed him went to the tomb, but they didn't find his body. They saw angels who said Jesus was alive. And then some of our friends went to the tomb. They saw it empty, too. Cleopas and Micah glanced over at the stranger to see how he would take the story. How foolish you are. Excuse me? How long it takes you to believe all that the prophets said? Didn't the Messiah have to suffer these things and then receive his glory? Uh, what? Cleopas and Micah were floored. The stranger had started out by asking them questions. Now it appeared he was schooling them. The whole story is laid out already in scripture and everything written by Moses and the prophets. The stranger reminded them of scriptures they had heard since they were children. Words written thousands of years before showed how Jesus would be born, how he would suffer, and how he would die. So you see, things were supposed to happen this way. This is incredible. You're saying that God has been planning this day for thousands of years? Yeah, but if that's true, then you're saying Jesus is alive? As the stranger smiled at them, 
Cleopas and Micah realized they had reached Emmaus. Oh, uh, this is us. The stranger nodded and kept walking. Wait, stay with us. It's, it's nearly evening. The stranger joined them at the place they were staying and sat down to dinner with them. This looks like a really fresh loaf of rye. You want to bless the food? The man took the bread and looked up to heaven. Thank you, Father. Then he broke the bread, giving each of them a piece. It was then that God had opened their eyes. Cleopas and Micah saw clearly who this man was. Jesus? It's you! As soon as the men recognized him, Jesus disappeared from sight. That was real, right? Jesus broke this bread. He gave it to us. I think deep down I knew it. He explains to us what the scriptures meant. Weren't we excited as he talked with us on the road? We have to tell everyone. Right now. The men were far too excited to wait until the morning. Now, even though it was dark now, they raced the entire way back to Jerusalem. When they reached the place where the disciples were staying, the men could barely contain themselves. What's going on? Are you okay? We have seen Jesus. He's alive. Jesus' friends gathered around as Cleopas and Micah shared the whole story. They were amazed to discover how much bigger God's story was than they expected. Okay, so it doesn't matter how important you are or how talented you are or how much you think you know things. Things will still happen to you that you don't see coming, like I didn't see a room full of balloons coming today. Being humble means admitting there are things you can't do and things you don't know. I am really good at that. That wasn't very humble. Those guys on the road with Jesus thought they knew everything God had planned. That's why when Jesus died, they were like, no way. But Jesus showed them God knew what he was doing all along. For like thousands of years, God left clues that he was sending someone to save the world someone from Abraham's family, a king, like King David, and he would come to earth as a baby, like that prophet guy Isaiah said. There were even clues that a savior would die and come back to life. All that came true with Jesus. So when you expect things to go a certain way, even if you like 100% know things are gonna go that way, they may not. And that's okay, because nobody knows the future, except for God. Hey, maybe we can look into the Bible for clues to what God's plan is for us. Let me see if I can find my Bible. Ah! Oh. No, that's not it. Okay, but there's one verse I remember. It's kind of a clue. This guy Paul wrote, We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him. I think that means even things that seem bad will turn out good in the end. Pretty cool, huh? So I don't need to know everything that's gonna happen because God's in control. Here's one thing to remember today. There's always more to discover about God's plan. We're never going to know everything. That's why we've got to keep searching. I'm going to look for my Bible one more time. I want to see if there's any more clues. Not what I expected, but I think it'll do the job. You might want to close your ears for this and your eyes just to be safe. <laughs> Don't worry, Floor. I'll find you. Whoa. God's plan is bigger than we could ever imagine. That's great for us to remember. There's always more to discover about God's plan. Let's tell God right now how excited we are about his plan for us. Let's pray. Dear God, we're so thankful for your big story, that you always had a plan from the very beginning. Lord, to come and rescue us, to come and save us, to come and give us good gifts to live life big. Lord, we just trust you as we uh, seek to understand and know more of your great plan for our lives. Help us to discover your ways more and more. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, for today's activity, you are going to need a blank piece of paper, maybe something hard to write on, and a pencil. So if you haven't got those things yet, run and grab them because you're going to need them. Now, I'm going to give you five minutes to draw a picture of
of the two men that were walking with Jesus. Now, you know us too well to know it's not going to be that easy. I want you to draw this picture on your head without seeing what you're drawing. So you've got five minutes now to get your drawing done and we'll see you back here soon. to know the answer do you okay what 
the shoes say to the hat before singing off on a walk? The answer is dun 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 dun. dun. You go on ahead, and we'll follow on foot. <laughs> Funny, right? Did you get it? I hope you got it. Bye. Well, how did you get on with the riddle? Did it give you a giggle? <laughs> did you manage to guess it? <laughs> well, I loved it. What I also love is that it is so good to know that we can trust God. In fact, trusting God is what humility is really about. Because sometimes humility means admitting you don't know everything, you don't know it all, you don't know that one plus one plus one equals one, three and one. Maybe you don't know how to juggle. We don't know it all, but we can trust the one who does know it all, the one with the plan. That's right. Hey, you're never done learning. You're, mm. You can always learn, especially when it comes to God and his big story for your life. Hey, you can learn whether you're at school, whether you're at home, whether you're doing your activities. Uh, in fact, I've got the saying for my life that I like to think about and apply. It's life is my classroom. So that means everything and everywhere I am and everything I do, I can learn. Yeah, and that's such a great saying. If you've been at Salt Kids for a while, you've probably heard Brad say it before. It's one of his favourites. And it's definitely true. But the most important thing we need to keep learning about is learning about God and his plan. After all, the more you discover about God, the more you can make the wise choice and live out his plan for your life. Yeah. Hey, just keep asking questions, especially when it comes to God's big plan for your life and discovering more about God. Keep asking questions. Yeah. We'll learn heaps by doing that. That's right. Don't stop discovering God's big story for you. Right. That's a wrap. We'll see you next week. Um, I'm going to get back to practicing my juggling skills. Wish me luck. <laughs> see you next time, guys. Same time, same place in your lounge. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> we still put me jelly. Does it go over the fence? I think it might yep. have. Oh, good one. Oh, no, was it a cricket ball? Yeah. <laughs>